This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. The need for more affordable vehicles is causing Ford to make some key shifts. Last month, CEO Jim Farley revealed that the automaker created a top-secret Skunk Works program to develop an EV platform that significantly slashes cost. And Alan Clark, the person who led engineering on the Tesla Model Y, is heading up the program. According to Bloomberg, his team is less than 100 people, and the first models will debut in late 2026, priced around $25,000. There's going to be a compact electric truck and SUV, and possibly another vehicle that could be used for ride hailing. The Maverick has been a surprise hit for Ford, so a compact electric truck makes sense. And as small SUVs are one of the fastest growing segments. But a ride hailing car is a surprise. And we wonder how big Ford's plans could be. Remember, GM CEO Mary Barra thinks that Cruise could generate $50 billion a year in revenue by 2030. Jim Farley says he wants the new models to turn a profit within the first year of hitting the market. So it'll do things like use LFP batteries, which are about 30% cheaper than traditional lithium batteries. With its focus on more affordable EVs, Ford is delaying plans for a pricier three-row electric SUV. The UAW says it's ready to rumble at Volkswagen's U.S. assembly plant in Tennessee. The union claims that a supermajority of the plant's 4,000 workers signed cards saying they want to be represented by the United Auto Workers. And so it filed a petition with the National Labor Relations Board to hold an election there. The union lost a vote there in 2019 when 52 percent of the workers voted against the union. Only 1,600 workers voted in that election. Now comes the tricky part for the union. Workers will often sign a card saying they're in favor of a union just to get organizers to stop pestering them. Then when they vote in secret at the ballot box, they vote against the union. But this time it could be different and everyone in the U.S. auto industry will be waiting with anticipation to see the results of the vote. Fisker is in serious trouble. The company has practically run out of money. It stopped production of the Ocean SUV, and it says there's, quote, substantial doubt that it can continue without raising more capital. The company started shipping vehicles last year and built roughly 10,000 units. But it still has about 5,000 units in inventory, and we've seen reports of quality problems and other software issues. Fisker says it's trying to raise $150 million, but we think it would need more like a billion dollars or someone to take it over to have any chance of surviving. The U.S. Department of Energy is giving automakers a break. It's expected to announce revised fuel economy rules today that will give car companies more time to adjust to the stricter standards. It originally proposed to lower the fuel economy equivalency of electric vehicles by 72% in 2027, which the Detroit automakers warned would result in fines of $10.5 billion for not complying with the standards. Instead, the DOE will reduce the fuel economy ratings through 2030 by 65% in total to give companies more time to adjust. And in another win for automakers, the EPA is expected to issue revised emission rules that will soften the requirements of its original proposal. However, the easing of the standards is front-loaded, and by 2032, they're expected to be as strict as the original proposals. When the elements are working against you, being confident in your grip on the road is what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza tires. Improved acceleration in wet conditions. Chinese battery maker Goshen is suing a U.S. township in Michigan where it wants to build a plant. Township board members voted to prevent extending the city's water supply to the plant's location, even though the township already entered into a contract to provide that water. A year and a half ago, the company and state officials announced plans to build the $2.4 billion plant. But there was local opposition to the construction due to tax incentives used for the project and concerns over Goshen's alleged ties to the Chinese government, which the company has denied. 
Last year, five members of the township's board who approved the project were recalled by voters and another two resigned. And it's the new board members who are trying to prevent the plant's construction. So Goshen is filing a lawsuit to get the township to honor the contract that was originally signed. NVIDIA, which makes some of the most powerful computer chips in the world and has a market cap of $2.2 trillion, came out with a new centralized computer for cars called Drive4, and it signed up a slew of automakers and autonomous mobility providers who want to use it. All the automakers are Chinese. BYD, Xpeng, Li Auto, Zeker, and Hyper will begin using the generative AI compute system when it comes out next year. NVIDIA says Drive Thor is perfect for, quote, feature-rich cockpit capabilities and highly automated and autonomous driving. It can perform a thousand teraflops of processing per second. And keep in mind that a high-end gaming console has about 13 teraflops. And if you wanted to know why Chinese automakers are on the leading edge of technology, this is a good example. NVIDIA is based in Silicon Valley while its chips are made by TSMC in Taiwan. Bentley is tapping the brakes on its transition to electric cars. First off, it's delaying the sales of its first BEV by two years until 2027, which the company blames on technical difficulties with software development. Since Bentley is part of the Volkswagen Group, that sounds like another car ad victim to us. But Bentley is also backtracking on its commitment to go all electric by 2030 and will put more emphasis on plug-in hybrids instead. But its main competitor, Rolls-Royce, already has its all-electric coupe, the Spectre, on sale, and Rolls says it's still committed to going all electric by 2030. One factor in Bentley's delay is that its sales revenue and profit fell last year. Sales fell 11%, revenue dropped 13%, and profits came in 17% lower. CEO Adrian Hallmark blamed rising interest rates. He said customers who were leasing their cars saw the cost of their monthly payments triple. Chinese EV maker Neo opened its first solar-powered battery swapping station in China. The station's power modules achieve a peak efficiency of 98.2% and a discharging power of 62.5 kilowatts. The modules are also bi-directional, meaning that electricity can be shared with the power grid. GM plans to significantly ramp up production of its Ultium batteries in the EVs that they go into. It sold fewer than 13,000 Ultium-based EVs last year, but this year, it's planning to make 200 to 300,000 examples, or 20 times more. That would be a massive jump, but still behind previous forecasts. However, GM says that it thinks the challenges it had in scaling up Altium is behind it. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data.